Hello class! Today we will discuss about arts, or specifically the arts and crafts of the Southeast Asian countries. I hope that everyone is doing great! Before we start, make sure to prepare this. Prepare your module, notebook, textbook, ball pen, and your art materials. Let's define our objective for today. Letter A. Identify characteristics of arts and crafts in specific countries in Southeast Asia. Create examples of arts and crafts using improvised materials. Topic for today, Characteristics of Arts and Crafts in Southeast Asia Let's now have a pre-test direction. Associate the following countries to the picture that depicts their culture the most. Here's our choices. Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore, and Philippines. For our first picture, and the second picture. Our third picture. For our fourth picture. And last picture. Let's have a short review. From the previous module, you have learned the elements and principles of art from the production of arts and crafts inspired by the cultures of Southeast Asia. Also, each country has its own elements and principles. Let's recall the elements and principles used in Thailand. Elements used Line color, space, and texture. Design, simple and linear design or shapes to fit on their costumes. Colors, pure warm colors or yet yellow. And orange to complement green, violet, and blue. Elements and principles used in Vietnam. Elements use shapes, lines, colors, and forms. And texture. Design, curvy linear, linear and geometric shapes, colors, combinations of warm and cool and neutral colors. Elements and principles used in Cambodia. Elements used, line, color, shape, value, form, texture, and space. Design, simple linear cuts to their costume, which projects grace and rhythm. Colors, Silver, Gray, Gold, and Magenta. Elements and Principles used in Indonesia. Elements use Line, Color, Shape, Texture, and Form. Design. Intricate outlines of flowers, geometric shapes, or animals depending on their regions. Colors. Primary, Secondary, and Tertiary Colors. Elements and principles used in Malaysia. Elements used. Line, shape, form, color, texture, and space. Design. Designs are cut simply rectilinear to create a floral pattern of embroidery. Colors. Primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. 
Let's now discuss our topic for today, Characteristics of Arts and Crafts in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Philippines. Southeast Asian art is known for having its art deep-rooted to its heritage. May it be religion, history obtained from freeing themselves from their colonizers, extraordinary tales of epics and myths, and long-practiced traditions in their countries. As an individual, learning about the different characteristics of their arts may aid you in seeing their practices. Indeed, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Singapore all have definite characteristics in regards of arts and crafts connected to their rich culture. For our activity number two, it's all about the travel blog. Directions. Using an Oslo paper and some coloring materials, draw things each for each country which reminds you of Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Singapore. Arts and Crafts of Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Singapore. Let's talk about the Arts and Crafts of Thailand. Thai silk is produced from the cocoons of silkworms. It is mainly produced in Korat, which is the center of the silk industry in Thailand. Thai weavers from this region raise the caterpillars on the steady diet of the mulberry leaves. Elements used in Thailand Line, color, space, and texture. Design Simple linear designs or shapes to fit on their costumes. Colors Pure warm colors of red, yellow, and orange to complement green, violet, and blue. Now let's talk about the arts and crafts of Malaysia. The fabric most common to both countries is the batik. The term batik is an Indonesian Malay word believed to be related to the Malay word titik, which means point, drop, or dot. The drop action refers to the process of dyeing the fabric by making use of a resist technique. There are two main types of batik in Malaysia. Those are, first, hand-painted batik. In hand-painted batik, the artists use canting, a small copper container with one or more different size pipes. The second one is the black printed. Black printed is done by the welding together strips, metal to form a metal block. The metal block is then dipped into molded wax and pressed against the fabric to make a pattern. The elements used in Malaysia Line, shape, form, color, texture, and space. Designs. Designs are cut simply rectilinear to create a floral pattern of embroidery. Colors. Primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Harmonized with earth colors. Arts and crafts in Thailand. Flying lanterns are made from the rice paper with the bamboo frame, which contain a fuel cell or small candle. When the fuel cell is lit, the flame hits the air inside the lantern, causing the lantern to rise. Once airborne, the sky lantern will rise until the fuel cell or candle stays alight. When the candle burns out, the sky lantern floats back to the ground. In Thailand, flying lanterns are used during the year for festivals. The most popular being is the Loi Kratong Festival. Let's learn the arts and crafts of Cambodia. In this country, they make paper by hand in the wider region for over 700 years using the bark of the local or the mulberry tree. The bark is crushed and soaked in water until it dissolves into a paste. The liquid is then scooped out, poured through a bamboo sieve, and finally placed in a thin layer on a bamboo bed and dried in the sun. Traditionally, paper was used for calligraphy and for making festive temple decorations, umbrellas, fans, and kites. Let us learn the arts and crafts in Indonesia. Shadow puppetry is famous in Indonesia. Wayang in modern Indonesian language means show or perform. Kulit means skin, a reference to the leather materials that the figures are carved out of it. 
Wayang Kulit is a type of a puppet shadow play performed around the Indo-Malayan archipelago, tracing its origin to India. For our third activity, we will make a bati through plain white t-shirt. These are the materials that we are going to use. Canvas or old cotton fabric, fabric paint or acrylic paint, washable white glue, paint brushes, plastic rack or plastic placemat. This is the first thing that you have to do. Prepare your fabric. Cut the canvas or cotton fabric into the desired size. Second thing, sketch a design. If you plan on making a detailed picture, you can lightly sketch your design on the fabric. Make your batik design with glue. Place plastic wrap or a plastic placemat under your fabric in case the glue seeps through. And then squeeze the glue to make lines and designs on your fabric. You can make simple designs like flowers, shapes, or any lines. For the fourth procedure, allow the glue to dry. This will take around 6 hours or more depending on the weight of your fabric and the thickness of the glue lines. And for our fifth procedure, remove the glue. Soak the fabric in warm water for 15 to 30 minutes. And now, the glue will soften as it soaks longer. You can speed up the process by rubbing on the areas with glue. After all the glue has been removed, hang the fabric to dry. And last but not the least, apply finishing touches. Once your batik has dried, iron it and it is ready to be framed or displayed as an artwork. For our post test, this is the direction. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Read and answer it on your notebook. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something from today's class.